and pop into the storage and we can pick up all the cool items in there check it out we got handgun bullets there's one set there acid rounds all right let's get the other set of handgun bullets and the creme de la creme is just over here let me reload my gun the side pack again the game won't penalize you for using the side pack so feel free to pick it up if you need it i would recommend it because you want to make things easy for yourself okay so she's just equipping it now so we now have two extra spaces in our inventory so with that being done we're going to head up to the surface we're going to use the club key get some more ammunition and then we're going to pick up the final puzzle pieces and prepare for the first uh, boss of the game again i'm not going to give it away it's all going to unfold naturally but at least i'm kind of at the danger area now so that's kind of one example of what can happen um, at this point in the game now it probably would have been even worse had i let the zombies in by going to the library um so the dogs are kind of you know you just gotta pull up with it as annoying as it is so let's pop in this room so i don't know what the differences are between this and leon's room right there doesn't seem to be anything in the lockers at all but if you go over here where the where leon's magnum was there's the acid rounds there we go so we've got plenty now to keep us going i'm going to save him for the bosses and of course difficult enemies or patterns that need to be taken down quickly you don't want to kind of use them willy-nilly i kind of know how much i'm going to need anyway so i do kind of get rid of some enemies quite quickly but yeah you don't want to kind of waste it all even though it seems like this game does throw you a lot of ammo and it does you have to kind of manage it effectively and i've, I've said it before i'll say it again it's always best to have more ammo than you need than kind of none at all it can the, the easier you pick it up the easier you can kind of lose it that's kind of my rule right so we need to go back through this area now because we're going to visit just outside the office door oh good it's all quiet now um yeah check out what happens when i go through now remember the zombie pattern in the a scenario it's much harder on the beast now. Look, look how the zombies are positioned so you want to quickly maneuver out of the way oh there you go and just sort of aim for the phones there and just get get out of the zombies way and there's another one lurking just there so yeah very very devious so i've got another green herb so once i take out the zombie patterns i'm gonna use the herb and get it full health so yeah i i can afford to use a few acid rounds on them it just ensures that it gets them out of the way oh okay and there we are let's use that herb now and there we are we're back up to full speed now we're absolutely fine um i don't think there's any zombies in this area now anyway so we should have a clear run shouldn't be any problems right let's just get my gun out just in case i'm wrong oh, it does seem pretty empty right turn around this way and straight ahead you'll see the first door you want to go in here and discard your diamond key it gets it gets rid of it essentially it gives you a free space so why you would want to keep your keys and stuff i'll never know i don't know why it asks you why doesn't it just say this key is no longer needed like in alone in the dark that would be useful right there's the eagle stone and don't worry we will be picking up all the stones it, it seems like we haven't been picking them up i know but trust me we need to do all that in order to pick them up um it's i think this game gives you way too many things to think about like i think the first instinct is oh my god i need to pick up the stones don't worry it will all kind of unfold naturally you do get them quite easily i think even though everything's kind of moved around a little bit right it's the same thing in this room the same puzzle we need to light the furnace which is why i kept the lighter on me because i know i'm going to forget and it goes middle which is 12 right which is 13 and left which is 11 and the cogwheel falls off the wall 
Okay. Don't panic. Whatever you do, don't panic. Just run away from him. Head to the left. Pick up the cogwheel. Like so. Now immediately leave the room. Just pretend he's not there. Tra la 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 la. Lovely stroll in the Raccoon City Police Department. Isn't this fun? Best thing is just run away from him. It's not worth it. Overgrown Uncle Fester. Right, so we're going to just position ourselves this way. And we're going to head back now to the landing area. Oh, and here he is again. Johnny come lately. He really doesn't like Claire. But just run past him. And there you go. He does that double axe handle thing. That's when you know you can run past. He's really not a threat. Yeah, you know, once you know his kind of patterns, it's easy to be intimidated and bullied by him, but that's kind of all he does, really. He's a pussycat underneath. He's like a giant kind of, you know, giant teddy bear. <laughs> anyway, head out through here. We're going to head into a save room, I think, or, or find some healing items and just heal and then head to the top because uh, I'm not in a good position. I've taken too much damage. Uh, one reason is there's a liquor now has appeared on the landing and uh, I kind of have a lot of bad luck when I'm up there on that particular landing so I'm not taking any chances so I'm going to fully heal myself. It will also give me um, the correct amount of speed I need to run away from it because if I'm too slow that liquor will catch me. Uh, let me see. We'll put my lighter away. We'll need the crank. Uh, let me see, we use a herb. Oh, you know what? I think I might be able to put all the other stones in here, maybe. Oh, God, I can't find them now. Oh, I see. That stone and... Okay, was that it? Alright, yeah, that's it. Yeah, there was a red serpent stone in the other half of the blue stone, but that's all upstairs. It took me a while to kind of think through uh, what that was. I, I honestly, at this point, I thought I'd missed some stones. You know, probably like newcomers coming to this game thinking, oh, the stones I've missed. That's what I felt. But you don't. If you do all that, you won't miss any stones. Uh, you sort of have to do that in order to pick them up. So now I'm going to go into the library. It's safe to do it now because we won't be visiting these areas again. You will see zombies break through. Uh, downstairs and in various places we've already been but we won't need to go back to those areas again so we're absolutely safe that's why I said go to the library last oh look at that liquor he wants a piece of meat it's not going to happen there kid and there we go see this is why as soon as you come in here at any point you know, at the beginning, see, look, it lets lots of zombies in. This you do not want to happen. Again, you'll be just wasting ammo on them. And, you know, you just want to kind of... You don't want to kind of have to be dealing with that, particularly if you're going for an A rank. It can really slow you down as well, time-wise. I mean, it is possible. I have done it before. Like, I accidentally let them in, and I have managed to still get an A rank, but it's just, why would you want to do that, really? I might do it as a challenge, possibly, to see if I can kind of... And get through that might be something I'd be interested in but anyway um, we need to go across here and into this room so you will remember this room from Leon's run and my Claire B fun run essentially we need to put the crank in to lower some stairs and we need to put the cogwheel onto a mechanism up above and that will open a door and it will give us the second half of the blue stone the jaguar stone and then once we've done that we'll head back into the library do the shell puzzle get the final stone and then hopefully get out of dodge and uh, get to the next part of the game so yeah quite a lot to remember but if you got to this point and you've got plenty of herbs and plenty of ammo then you're on point really for doing it uh, the next part isn't too difficult i'm quite surprised um it's only until you encounter the next boss i'm not this boss but the one after that um it starts to become a little bit sink or swim you know things become very unpredictable for me it all hinges on the boss uh that particular boss i'm not going to mention who it is or what happens but you know 
it does kind of make or break for me. And look at that, it's the other half of the blue stone. So you want to combine them together. So now we've got two complete stones, and the last one is literally in the library when we do the shelf puzzle. Nice and simple. Let's pop down, turn, and go out the door. Nothing peculiar. <laughs> Head on back to the library now. Oh my god. Holy crap. Yeah. Here he comes again. He just will not leave Claire alone. What am I going to do? Well, absolutely nothing. I'm going to let him clothesline me and I'm just going to run past him. Waste of time. So yeah, that will save you. Took loads of ammo just running away from him. He's not worth the effort. And then just run over here. And we fall through the floor. And the puzzle's exactly the same. Push the first and second shelf to the right, which replicates that little model on the wall. And um, you will get the serpent stone, I believe, the red one. I think that's what it is. So let's do that. Oh, move. There we go. So we now have all three stones so we're ready to progress now we need to do some prep for the boss but yeah we're doing pretty well it's all good and we should be meeting up with sherry as well possibly i don't know she kind of does her own thing all right go through the door double doors all right i think i might have to take out this liquor i don't know to come back this way. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, come on. Oh, there you go. Got him first time. <laughs> nice. Well, I missed a shot, but, you know, bloody hell. He, he went for his death strike, and I just nailed him. And that is how you do it. So we're going to head back into the helicopter wreckage now and in Chief Irons' office. If we don't do all this, then we won't be able to get into the office at all and use the stone. So that's kind of why we, we did all that. This is kind of part of the game. Right, now let's see. I need to prep for the boss. So I might as well put my handgun away. You're not going to need it really. Take some herbs with you and take the... Let me see. I'll take an extra one with me and take some acid rounds just in case anything could go wrong. So I always kind of over prepare when it comes to bosses because you just never know. Um, even though I've run this so many times, the bosses always uh, surprise me. You know, just when I think I've got the upper hand, uh, they do something I just don't expect or I kind of make a mistake. So it's always best to, um, again, expect the unexpected. Right, let's pop into Chief Irons' office. Claire! Sherry, you're okay. I'm glad to see you're safe, Claire. Sherry, where the bloody hell have you been? You're grounded, Missy. Right, <laughs> push the button uh, on the portrait and look at that. Just input the stones and this will open up a door to a secret elevator and that's kind of where Chief Irons went. It's really curious how he was able to get down there without the stones, so maybe... There's an alternate route down there, I don't know. Ignore the piece of paper, it's just plot, basically, and just, uh... Claire! I'm going down there. Stay here and wait for me, okay? There we go. Sorry about that, I didn't want to interrupt the cutscene. Uh, the one thing the B scenario has is lots and lots of like, little FMV sequences and plot twists and details which is really great you know it's very much uh, very filmic and very um indicative of the 90s kind of movie attitude and action genre right there's nothing much down here in this little uh, dark corridor so let's pop through the door and let's crack on <laughs> so you've made it this far. Not bad, girl. But 
I'm not letting anyone leave my town. Everyone's gonna die. Calm down, Chief. What happened? Shut up! You couldn't possibly understand what's happened. Those monsters from Umbrella have destroyed my beautiful town. How could they do that to me after everything I've done for them? So it's true. You have been working with Umbrella. Then you must know about the G-Virus. What is it? Tell me! If you must know, it's the agent that can turn humans into the ultimate bio-weapons. Superior to the T-Virus in every way. Dr. William Birkin is the genius behind the project. William Birkin? I'm sure you've already seen his little girl running around here somewhere. Sherry, isn't it? In case you haven't already figured it out, the monster that's been tearing my precinct apart is yet another product of the G-Virus. An ultimate bio-weapon. Umbrella must be trying to cover its tracks. But if I have to go, I'm going to take you with me. like um whatever's devoured <laughs> poor chief irons is still down there we will be going down there in just a bit so pick up the acid rounds first and there we go we got plenty of um rounds for the boss thankfully um he doesn't take oh hello he doesn't take that many rounds blimey he's only half the man he used to be let's pop down the uh, ladder now and let's Prepare. Here we go. Here it is, guys. And check it out. Now, it looks like a super zombie with um, incredible strength. That was my first thought. But apparently, uh, this guy is William Birkin, uh, Sherry's dad. The guy that's been chasing her throughout the station. Um, luckily, he's very easy to take down if you have acid rounds. So wait for him to grow a new eye on his arm, like you do. And just basically wait for him to roar, wait for the cutscene to finish, and then just throw everything at him. Fire once, fire twice, fire three times, four times, five times, and then you want to run out of the way, because the fight's over, the music stops. And there you go. He just falls over the railing. Now let's go back and get Sherry. So yeah, it's really as simple as that. So I, I just over-prepared there because I guarantee most of the time he knocks me out of the way with the pipe. And that's probably the first time that I've ever been able to do this without him knocking me out. I may have done it as a kid, but it's, uh, I'll probably rephrase it. It's probably a long time since he's not been able to hurt me. So I haven't used any herbs, which means I'm, I'm a little bit ahead uh, when it comes to that. So... There's even more herbs as well to pick up where we're going. So all we've got to do is go back and get Sherry. Now, Sherry's going to be with us on and off a little bit in the next part of the adventure. Now, as much as I love Sherry, uh, she's one of my favourite characters in the game. Um, she does kind of sit down a little bit when you want to be moving on. And the game always reminds you, you have to look after Sherry. You have to go back and get her, which is all very well and good. But I'm kind Claire, of on the clock here. You came back! You know? <laughs> It's just one of those things you kind of have to do. Um, it's fun. nice. It's a nice touch because it shows that the developers care that it's a child. But yeah, what's I'm wrong, like, oh, Claire? Just hurry up, Sherry. It's Luckily, um, but I think it's, I found it's not a way out too of kind of forced. We should be able to find some place safe times. if we can just make it out of town. But don't worry, I'll protect you. I promise. But you have to make sure you don't leave my side. Take Sherry with us and let's crack on to the next part of the game, which is the sewers for more fun and adventure. <laughs> <laughs> 